sound speeds. And if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, then you'll probably hear content creators all over the place nitpick noise to death. Noise, 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 noise. It's all about the noise. You got to get the lowest possible EIN because that is the biggest thing that you need to do in your audio recording. But believe it or not, it might not be. As a matter of fact, many people I have heard audio samples from on YouTube and who have sent me audio samples over the years have nitpicked EIN, and that's not the thing that they should be nitpicking. And I'm going to explain why in this video. But first of all, let's start with where noise comes from. In a nutshell, most noise comes from analog signal flows, starting with a microphone, which has a certain amount of self noise to it. The audio coming from acoustic vibrations hits the capsules, comes out of the XLR cable analog into perhaps a preamp. And then it might leave there and go into some sort of an analog processor. Then it might go into a mixer, then eventually get into your interface where it's converted to digital. Every single thing in the signal chain is going to add a little bit of noise to it. So the game plan here that you want to try to do is get as minimal amount of noise while you maintain the proper amount of signal as you go all the way through. Every single one of those components that you run your audio through has a gain stage, which is basically a point where you can adjust your volume or your gain level. So if you are optimally recording in a level at your interface, that may not be ideal because coming out of your microphone, it could have gone into a preamp that was too hot and your audio was clipped. Then you might have corrected it saying, yeah, I'm going to try to lower this in the next gain stage. And then by the time it gets into your interface, it could be all jacked up. So what I usually recommend people to do is simplify your signal chain, unless you really know what you're doing. So starting with your microphone, when analog signals leave coming out of an analog cable into an interface, let's just keep it that simple, into an interface, not a mixer, not a DBX-286S, any of that kind of stuff, but just leaving your microphone going straight into your interface. It leaves, travels down the cable, which could introduce a little bit of noise to it in itself, and then it's converted to digital on your computer. But to the point where it's actually converted to digital, anything that it has run through before that is going to potentially introduce noise to it. So the goal here is to get the cleanest possible front end on your analog signal chain. And by clean, I basically mean that you want to have a well-defined signal with the minimal amount of noise possible. That's what clean basically refers to. So if I were to go out of a microphone, and go straight into an interface, the analog microphone, the analog cable, and then the analog input on your interface is the analog, analog signal flow. And any of those components can add noise to your signal. But then when it's converted to digital, there's no longer issues that you need to worry about regarding self noise unless you do something really bad in your processing. Now, this is the reason why a lot of microphones that are USB, when they leave the microphone and go straight into your computer via digital, you don't need to worry about self noise anymore because once it's converted to zeros and ones, zeros and ones are not affected by noise. You can run it straight over power cables and all kinds of really high EMF and RMI, uh, RFI producing devices, and it's not going to affect the audio of a digital audio line coming from something like a USB. Analog, it absolutely will, though. This is why most content creators recommend consumer audio people, for example, podcasters, not to have a mixer between your microphones and your interface. If you want to have multiple microphones, get yourself an interface which has multiple inputs, because if you get yourself a mixer, most likely, unless you spend a lot of money, it's not going to have very clean preamps, and you're going to simply introduce a lot of noise to the line, and you're not going to have the ability to isolate, record every single one of the channels that's going into it. So why is it then that I'm telling you that noise might not matter in your audio recording? Well, let's stick with the less is best idea of your microphone and your interface being the only two devices that could potentially introduce noise, even though technically your XLR cable could be as well. But let's just say it's a very premium XLR cable and you're not going to worry about the self noise that could come from that. It's more about your microphone and your interface. So two devices could potentially introduce noise and will be. Okay, so. If your EIN on your interface is extremely low, and watch my video on EIN if you have any questions about what that is, 
your microphone audio level is probably going to be higher than that by the time you gain it correctly. Unless, of course, you're doing something weird like whispering into your microphone and gaining it way up so that way you're hearing more of the self noise of your microphone. In some circumstances, you're going to hear more of the microphone self noise. In some circumstances, you're going to hear more of the EIN of your interface. Usually, you're going to hear the self noise of your microphone first. However, there's also a third type of noise that you need to be more concerned with than probably any other, and that is environmental noise. That is the room that you're recording in. This is why people like Mike Delgadio, Curtis Judd, Banju Scott and Podcastage, me, you'll hear all of us talk about the environment that you record in. If you have, let's say, $1,000 to spend, spend maybe $200, $250 of that on your audio gear and then spend the rest of that treating your environment, making it as low noise as possible, lowering the environmental room noise that you have to record in. The reason why is because if you spend a thousand dollars on your audio, but you do nothing to treat your room, that really good quality audio setup is going to pick up the bad acoustics in the room. Great. And if you spend a lot of money on decent quality audio gear and you treat your environment so that that way it sounds really good, then it's going to actually pick up less bad acoustics, which are going to make your audio recording sound better. So let's visualize this. The red is the interface, the blue is the microphone, and the green is the environmental noise in the room that you're recording in. If the environmental noise in the room that you're recording in is the loudest noise that you hear in your audio recording, then it's very simple. You want that to be lowered. So you have to treat your environment. You need to turn off things like air conditioners and fans and try to baffle windows that might be introducing noise. Do whatever you can to try to lower it below the microphone or interface self noise. In a recording studio, for example, it is extremely quiet because they spend a lot of money on acoustic treatment to try to lower that noise floor to the point where it is no longer the loudest amount of noise in your audio recording. This is one reason why it is not going to be an issue for you to process out any type of background sounds that you're going to record in a studio, in a proper studio environment, because low volume constant noises can be easily processed out in today's digital audio workstations, even free ones. And in some pro gear, you have the option to enable something called a DSP, a digital signal process, which will either reduce or completely eliminate the self noise that is embedded in the actual gear itself. So the self noise that the, that the actual device puts out, it knows what it is because the engineers have basically programmed that, that frequency spectrum into it and then either reduced it, knocked it down in volume or completely eliminated it. So this is one thing that I have made recommendations to, for example, like Rode for their Rodecaster Pro 2, have perhaps a button that allows you to completely negate out all the self noise in the preamps. That'd be kind of cool. But the biggest takeaway here is that the low self noise of your interface and low self noise of your microphone are most likely not the biggest culprits in your audio recording. It's going to be the environmental noise in your recording studio. So if you can get that environmental noise below, so that way it is not the loudest thing in your audio recording, you're going to be in great shape. Process out the noise floor with very minimal amount of processing, because in all honesty, if you can take care of it without the need of processing, that's even better. And if you do have to process out the noise floor in any of your audio recordings, then do that before you do any other kind of audio processing, because there's nothing worse than doing it last and having all your other processing from EQ to compression constantly adjusting the noise floor in your audio recording. So thanks for tuning into this episode of Sound Speeds and be sure to tune in the future for more things to make you think about. Pro sound tips, and as always, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.